Good morning. We welcome all of you here this morning. We're glad that you're here. We look forward to all the Lord has to share with us this morning as we lift up the name of the Lord Jesus Christ together. Wanted to mention a couple things uh, by way of announcement. First of all, our service and altar flowers are dedicated to Stacy Richards this morning in honor of her birthday. Also, I uh, wanted to bring to your attention the insert uh, in our bulletin. Uh, on one side, you have an opportunity to order an Easter lily in honor or memory of someone and uh, just fill this out, put it in the offering plate, and, uh, and as, as it says on here, write Easter lilies on your check. And on the flip side is an opportunity to have flowers uh, on the altar. And uh, again, the same thing, uh, just fill out the form and drop it in the offering plate. Also wanted to mention, this morning... We begin our new Sunday school program. I announced it last week. Uh, We will be, uh, when the service is over and you uh, leave the sanctuary, our Sunday school class members and any visitors that would like to visit one of our Sunday school classes, uh, please make your way uh, down the hallway. Um, I just went back there to make sure the uh, lights and especially the heat was on. So it uh, hasn't been used in a while, a little chilly down there, but... Uh, should warm up uh, by the time the service is over. Also, um, I just uh, talked with uh, Brother Jimmy from the Baptist Church uh, this week, and our Easter sunrise service is scheduled for uh, 7 o'clock early on Easter Sunday morning. We'll be meeting at the Rogers Park Gazebo, and I hope you'll Uh, If you're up that early, uh, make plans to join us. It's always a wonderful time of fellowship and worship together. That's 7 o'clock on Easter Sunday morning. Let's see. I think that's all I have by way of announcement. Lynette, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Pastor Andy. And good morning again to everybody. It's so good to see everybody this morning. We're getting more and more people back almost every Sunday. That's so nice to hear. Um, Let's see. By way of announcements um, in our bulletin, um, I'll just kind of touch the highlights of of the announcements on on here. Uh, Let's see. The Warren Food Bank is right now needing canned green beans and white rice. Um, Easter lilies or altar flowers, there's an insert in your bulletin for if you need either one of those, just fill those out. School supplies, uh, uh, if you you want to donate for school supplies for Warren ISD, be sure to put school supplies on the memo line of your check. Uh, Sanctuary banners, if you would like to make a memorial donation in honor or memory of a loved one, just fill out that memorial form and put banners on the memo line of your of the check. Um, the Monday service, Monday Thursday service, will be held on Thursday, April the 1st at 6 p.m. It seems strange we're already talking about April. <laughs> and um, the church uh, 100th anniversary committee will meet on Tuesday, March the 30th at 11 o'clock. Um, is, there, is there any... Other announcements? There was quite a few on here this morning. Anybody? Oh, go ahead, Jen. Um, just so you know, we will have extra flowers because of the frost. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we will have extra flowers. Because of the frost, I ordered extra flowers for the Living Cross. Uh, so they will be here on Easter Sunday as well as our lilies. So just so you know. Got oh, that covered. Okay. Thank you, Sally. You're welcome. Okay. All right. We'll go to the call to preparation. I am the the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Blessing and honor and glory and might unto the Lamb. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Let's bow together for prayer. 
Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for another wonderful opportunity to gather together as the body of Christ in this place to lift up the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for your presence here with us. We look forward to all that you have to share with us this morning, and we thank you for the opportunity that we have to join in fellowship together and experience your love through each other. We give you all the honor and the glory and the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our opening hymn this morning is Marching to Zion. We'll sing verses 1, 2, and 4 together. Let us stand as we sing. Would you please remain standing for the affirmation of faith? Uh, it's number 888 and will be on the screen. This is the good news which we have received, in which we stand, and by which we are saved. Christ died for our sins, was buried, was raised on the third day, and appeared first to the women, then to Peter and the twelve and then to many faithful witnesses. We believe Jesus is the Christ, the Anointed One of God, the firstborn of all creation, the firstborn from the dead, in whom all things hold together, in whom the fullness of God was pleased to dwell by the power of the Spirit. Christ is the head of the body, the church, and by the blood of the cross reconciles all things to God. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. This is the time in our service that we share our joys and our concerns. Um, <clears throat> do we have some concerns this morning? We'll start with them first. 
I know there's a, a lot of people that right now are sick with COVID, I mean, all over the world, and uh, people that are getting over the COVID. And uh, I would just like to say I'd like to I'd like to keep everybody in in their in their prayers that are going through this time when they're sick, and the ones that are anticipating the shots are not quite sure, and just the anxiety of all of it. I just wish that we could just pray so it would would all be okay and everybody would have some peace about it. I've had my first shot, and um, so I'm supposed to get the second one in April. I'm a little bit anxious about it because some people say it makes you feel a little bit bad, but it's a lot better than having the disease. <laughs> so it's, it's all going to be good. <laughs> um, and also, I know there's people that we that we don't we don't announce our our concerns in our heart, but we, but they're there. And uh, I just like for everybody to pray for each other and pray for the prayers in our heart that we we know we're there, but we just don't speak about. How about uh, joys? Do we have some joys? I'll announce one, uh, the joy of spring. Yes. Uh, the flowers are fully in bloom. The, every kind of thing is blooming in the world over our house right now. <laughs> and we sure do appreciate it. And, and secondly, thanks to some great help from my wife, we have over two-thirds of garden put in yet. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Tim. That's, that's good. Oh, my goodness. Thank you, Jack. <laughs> that was going to be one of my joys, to say that there's some people here this morning we haven't seen. Jack in Alberta and Liz, of course, she comes off and on, but she's here today, and when she comes, it's a special day. <laughs> Liz Pound and Jamie and Paul Lipke, they're back, and we're, it's so good to have y'all back. The Woods family are back, and just several people, families here that I haven't seen in the last few Sundays. It's so good to have y'all back. The weather's getting so pretty, and uh, everybody's wanting to get outside and enjoy the sun. And and uh, I know it's a little bit cool sometimes, but the, when the wind's blowing, but it's it's getting better and better, warmer and warmer. Got another one. Okay. I don't know if y'all realize, but Tim's been on the prayer list, and it was for his back. Obviously, his back is much better because we did put in over a hundred plants yesterday wow. in the garden. We only have thirty more to do today, so we're <laughs> so excited that he's back and and um, in his garden. We're so blessed, and we're looking forward to all the stuff that you grow, Tim, because you bring it all here. We're so it's all so good. <laughs> okay, or is there any more? Anybody? All right, Pastor Randy, I'll give it back to you for the invocation. Let's bow together for prayer. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we are so very blessed to be gathered here today to join our hearts in prayer and come into your presence in prayer. We thank you for the opportunity to have an audience with the creator of the universe. We recognize this morning that we are not worthy of your amazing love for us. So we humbly come before your throne. We confess to you all of our sins. We ask for your forgiveness. Cleanse us in the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Prepare our hearts to be the disciples that you've called us to be. And Lord, our hearts are burdened this morning for those in need among us for the request spoken here as well as the unspoken request on our hearts and those listed in our bulletin. We ask that you would bring healing, comfort, and peace to your people today. We thank you that you are our great physician. You know and understand our needs even before we bring them before your throne. Your Holy Spirit is already at work moving among us, touching and healing hearts and lives. We thank you for the many answers to prayer that we have experienced together as individuals and also as a church. We thank you that you are so faithful and so loving 
and that you continue to walk with us moment by moment, day by day. And we give you all the honor and the glory and the praise. And now as Jesus taught his disciples, we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This is that time in our service when we uh, have our tithes and offerings. Uh, As we continue through COVID, we have our offering plate at the back and also one uh, by the door as you come in. Uh, So if you'd like to drop off your offerings there, uh, we would certainly be grateful for your continued love and support of the church. Uh, Also, we have the, for those of you that will be viewing, uh, continue to view online, uh, we have uh, those two options available for you to be able to continue to give as well. Let's bow together for a moment of prayer. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for all your many blessings upon us. We thank you that even when we get discouraged or lose our way, you are always there and we can come to you at any moment, at any time. And we thank you for your love and your faithfulness and your presence with us. Bless these, our tithes and offerings. May they be used to bring honor and glory to our Lord Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Let's stand together for the doxology. Please remain standing for our hymn of praise, Savior, like a shepherd, lead us. We'll sing verses 1, 2, and 4 together.
Would you please remain standing for the reading of God's holy word? The, <clears throat> this morning the uh, scripture is from Luke 19, 37 through 44. As he was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would shout out. As he came near and saw the city, he wept over it, saying, If you, if you, even you, had only recognized on this day the things that make us, that, that things that make our, for peace, but now they are hidden from our eyes. Indeed, the days will come upon you when your enemies will set up ramparts around you and surround you, and he, and him you in on your side. They will crush you to the ground, you and your children within you, and they will not leave within you within you one stone upon another, because you did not recognize the time of your visitation from God. This is the word of God from the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you. You may be seated. Um <clears throat> Uh, there was one other joy. I forgot Pastor Randy this morning. Okay. Uh, the joy of the way the, the campus here looks. The church, if y'all noticed it this morning, the, all the, the beautiful flowers and uh, the fountain and uh, Chuck Cox and um, James Griffin. We we want to give you a big a big uh, applause for do, help doing all that and getting prepared, and making sure Amen. it got done. <laughs> Thank y'all so much. Let's bow together for prayer. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning for your word. Open our spiritual eyes and ears to see and hear your truth for us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We are continuing our Lenten series called Journey of Stones. And hopefully each one of you uh, picked up a stone this morning on your way in. If not, uh, raise your hand. The ushers will be happy to bring you one if you didn't get one as you came in. All right. This uh, Journey of Stones series uh, gives you an opportunity at the end of the service to a choice to leave your stone, which represents sin in your life, at the foot of the cross. Laying your sin at the foot of the cross represents your desire to be free from that sin and learn to live a holy life before God. Now this morning I'm kind of jumping ahead a little bit with our scripture. Uh, We're going to jump into the story of Palm Sunday, Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem, but we're just going to pick out one little part of that. Uh, as the basis for the sermon this morning. I want to draw your attention to the stones that Jesus refers to. Now, if you've ever seen on TV or maybe gone in person when a sports team returns home after winning a championship, Um, I've been to a few of those in person and have also seen a number of them on TV. And uh, you'll know that it's kind of a crazy scene. Uh, Sometimes the whole football stadium, for example, can be filled up and people are yelling and screaming and the team comes in and, and everybody's just excited about their accomplishments. Well, this is kind of like Uh, What you find on Palm Sunday when Jesus makes his entry into Jerusalem, the crowds are excited because they think Jesus is getting ready to take his place on his throne in Jerusalem. But you see, what's also happening at this time when the crowds are going crazy, on the other side of the street, so to speak, 
The religious establishment is seething at the popularity of this man who they want eliminated. So the Pharisees demanded that Jesus rebuke his disciples for being too noisy and too excited. And then Jesus made what I think is a very fascinating response to these accusers. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would shout out. Jesus was telling the Pharisees that when God is on the move, nothing is going to silence the crowd. Isn't that a kind of a typical response, the ones the Pharisees made, even among church leaders today? Let's not let our faith get too emotional. God wants us to learn how to be quiet and reverent. It reminds me of a situation I had about 20 years ago. Renee and I were working with senior high youth at summer camp in Lakeview. We worked very hard to provide a program that we felt the youth could respond to. One of those important ingredients was worship. We wanted worship to be meaningful and youth-led. That, of course, meant we needed a praise band and we sang, you know, kind of loud contemporary music. Well, after the first worship service on on that Monday night, an older preacher who was working with us with the senior high youth came up to me and said, I need to talk to you. He said, I know you think you're giving these kids what you think they want with all this loud rock music and it'll get them all excited. But the truth is they need to understand that God expects them to learn how to be quiet and reverent during worship. And I had to pause for a minute, and finally I just, I was thinking, okay, what's a nice way for me to respond to this? And then I just thought, I just need to kind of lay it all out on the table there. I told him that, In reality, I believe just the opposite of that. I wanted these kids to bring some of their own infectious excitement into worship. And then, even more importantly, when they leave camp, to take that excitement back to their home churches. Plus, I told them, I've already paid for the expenses to have the praise band here this week. And these praise band members all took vacation time from work in order to be here to lead the worship here at camp. So just to be, make sure he understood how I believe, I said, I just think it sends the wrong message that we have unnecessary emotionalism. I believe everybody should have they're not only their spiritual eyes open, but it should be done with their whole heart, body, soul, and mind, with all of their being. Now, of course, uh, he didn't really take that very well, so we kind of kept our distance the rest of the week. But we continued with our praise and worship. Unfortunately, the church in 2021 has very often listened to the voice of the modern-day Pharisees for far too long. God's not looking for religious fanatics, but he does want people who are spiritually and emotionally invested in their faith and in their church. People who desire to experience the presence of God with all their mind, heart, soul, and strength. I believe spiritual and emotional investment in the church not only affects maybe how we worship, but more importantly, it affects how we share our faith. You know, it's absolutely amazing as as I look back over my life, How Satan has turned our culture on its head. Back in the 1950s, church was the socially acceptable thing to do. 
If you wanted to be seen as an upstanding member of your community, then you attended or joined a church. Now, that didn't mean that the churches didn't have a few of these people who were more interested in the politics of being there, but at least those who weren't there for God and were only there to be seen, at least the church had an opportunity to minister to them. But here we are just 70 years later. Most of us remember the 50s in our society, and we've seen how it has been completely reversed. It is now politically incorrect to speak of your faith, and going to church doesn't even speak to your character anymore. All of that has been replaced with socially acceptable anger and violence and immorality as a way to live your life. Social media has given people an anonymous voice to have an open door to spew violence and hatred while the voices of faith and reason are being silenced. The organized church for years has been losing its voice and membership here in the United States. Just like the Pharisees wanted all those followers of Jesus to shut up and stay quiet, now our culture has taken that same position. They wanted Jesus eliminated then, and they want him eliminated now. Society will not change its course or its mind. So who is it that has to change? Well, today, you hold in your hand another stone, and this stone stands for silence. It stands for the silence that we have instead of being willing to speak out about the truth that God has laid in our heart. Now I will tell you that you can take your stone and hold it up to your ear and you'll find that these stones are not yet crying out. Which means God is still giving us an opportunity as his people to speak up, to tell the world what we believe to be true, to share our faith, to allow our faith to be heard, to be heard as not just something we casually believe, but something that is the most important part of our entire being to be fully invested in our desire to put Jesus Christ on the throne and to be able to sing with our whole hearts, Hosanna to the King. So here are the questions we have to answer this morning. Is Jesus truly on the throne of our hearts? Is he Lord and Savior over everything we are and we have? Do we recognize the urgency of this hour? And most importantly, where the boots hit the ground, are we willing to stand when it's not a very popular thing to do? Jesus warned us about our silence. No one ever knows, at least the people around us, when we are silent, when we should be speaking. No one around us knows that we haven't spoken up and said anything. The world all sees our silence as being fine. It's okay. We're okay. No problem. The only person 
who hears our silence is God. So as we close our service this morning and we prepare for our hymn of invitation, you'll have the opportunity to bring your stone to the front, to the foot of the cross. If you choose to leave your stone, your stone of silence, you are telling God that you don't want to be silent anymore. You will look for opportunities to share your faith, teach forgiveness and love, and show the world a better way to live. Literally, you want to cry out about your faith so that your stone doesn't have to. Let's bow together for a moment of prayer. Lord, we thank you this morning for this opportunity to consider our faith and how truly important it is in our everyday life. Forgive us for the times when we've been silent, the times that we haven't spoken up, the times we've been intimidated by those who are telling us to be quiet. Forgive us for missing opportunities to touch and change the lives of others. As we leave this place this morning, may we be reminded how important it is to speak up, to share our faith and your love with those around us. We give you all the honor and the glory and the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we prepare to close our service this morning, just a reminder that as you leave, uh, you have an opportunity to attend a Sunday school class. It will go until about 10.20. And then uh, all three classes will be dismissed to come back in here for the actual Sunday school lesson. So this will be a time of fellowship, taking attendance, prayer requests, and just the opportunity to get back together and share with one another again. So it'll be the first part of the class will be in the Sunday school rooms, and then you'll return in here at 1020 for the Sunday school lesson. By the way, we're starting a new series on the book of Matthew, I believe. And so uh, we hope you'll come and join us to begin a new Bible study series together. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forevermore. Amen. Let us stand together. There is something about that name.
God bless you.